record last night. So I feel particularly lucky. Um, even some parts of New Jersey are still under flood watch. So we really lucked out here in beautiful Hoboken and the surrounding cities. And New York City, too, is still under a flood watch, parts of it, the Bronx. They, they said, I heard that the railroad tracks in Hoboken train station were flooded. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Hoboken has footage of it. Oh, yikes. So those of us who have to commute by New Jersey Transit, I feel for you. I've been in that situation myself, so it can be pretty frustrating. Um, well, you know, they want to build a seawall to protect those railroad tracks, but that's a whole nother discussion. We won't go there this morning. Anyway, we are lucky and here and dry. I hope everyone's home and or property or apartment are safe and dry as well. We are doing our second artist for the month of January, 2024. I have chosen an artist that I'm gonna lay all my cards on the table and be completely frank and honest with you about. I know little about this artist. His name is Pierre Bonnard. He is in some circles an incredibly famous artist. In fact, he has been described as one of the most consequential, most important members of the 20th century art world and one of the most influential artists of the 20th century art world. But I, for many reasons, know little about. I am a little bit embarrassed to say. And we are all going to learn about him together today. And our agenda, as usual, is we're going to look at a slideshow of his work, talk the little bit I know about his life that I've gained from Wikipedia and other research. And we're going to talk about what we feel about his work, whether we like it or not, our reactions aesthetically to it. And then I'm going to do a brief demonstration of color mixing and a review of color mixing for those of you who feel you need a refresher or a review. And then we're going to do our own paintings a la Bonnard or inspired by Bonnard. Any questions so far? No one. Great. All right. Oh, I forgot to say thank you to the Hoboken Public Library for allowing us this incredible opportunity to do our artwork here in person in the beautiful downstairs art space here at the library and also in the comfort of our own home studios. Laura, are we ready to make our announcement about our extra classes or not yet? Uh, Okay. Um, you want me to announce the exact date? Is it the 14th or the 21st? I think it's the 14th. Anyway, um, so we're adding an extra class once a month, each Wednesday afternoon, not every Wednesday afternoon, but one Wednesday a month in the middle of each month, so that those of you who prefer getting up a little later, can come in the afternoon, or those of you who would like to have a longer stretch of time in which to do your creative work can come in the morning, leave your work right where you are sitting, take a lunch break, and come back at one 
and continue working on what you started in the morning. I will be teaching the same class in the afternoon that I start in the morning. So we are keeping it off on Valentine's Day. Which is the 14th. So our first class will begin in February, on February 14th. The morning class will remain from 10 a.m. till 12 noon. Then there will be a lunch break from 12 until 1 p.m. And the second class will begin at 1 until 3. And then, you know, that will be it. That will be it. Now, the only thing that you may find problematic, but I don't think it'll be a problem, is that those of you who come in the morning will have to listen to the slide presentation again. However, I won't force you to watch it. You can continue working on the work that you start in the morning. And that is true for those of you on Zoom. You can come in the afternoon too if you want to join us. Um, you won't have to wa watch the slideshow again. We can talk more about that at the end of the class, or if you have questions, you can always put them in chat, those of you who are at home. I'm really looking forward to this. We were doing it for years, um, but then the pandemic happened and the afternoon class um, got canceled. So I'm so glad that we're starting it back up again. And maybe, who knows, it might eventually get expanded to more afternoons a week. I don't know about you, but morning time can be problematic. All right, so Pierre Bonac, he was French. He was born October 3rd, 1867. He was an illustrator, printmaker, and painter. And he was known for a particularly stylized, decorative painting and a very bold use of color. So I've chosen him as I'm choosing all of the artists that we're looking at in January because of this use of color. We are now in the winter doldrums. There's not a lot of color to see today, case in point. Most of today is pretty gray, right? As was yesterday. And probably many of the days ahead of us. And one of the wonderful things about visual art is that it can brighten up these gray days of winter. And Bonnard was certainly one of those people who used the kind of color that we need at this time of year. He was a founding member of a group of post-impressionists whom I never even heard of. If you've heard of this group, let me know. I'm looking at you, Heather, because I know you're a student of art history. Don't mean to put the pressure on you. But the group of avant-garde painters that he was a founding member of was called Les Nabis, N-A-B-I-S. What does that mean, French? Je ne sais pas. I have no idea. <laughs> Les Nabis. His early work was strongly influenced by Paul Gauguin, as well as the prints of Hokusai and other Japanese artists. And Bonnard was a leading figure in this transition. Okay, let's go to the videotape. Because Just kidding. Nabi comes from the Hebrew word for prophet. Yeah. It comes, all right, thank you, Heather. It's a parallel between the way the group of painters aim to revitalize painting as prophets of modern art mm -hmm. and the way the ancient prophets had rejuvenated Israel. Mm -hmm. So the word Nabi, Heather just looked it up for us, comes from the Hebrew word for prophet Nab Nabi. Nabi. Mm -hmm. And the and this fits with my definition of Le Nabi. Some of them were very spiritual and religious, and they believed that they were the prophets of modernism. They were breaking away from the old traditions of classical European art 
and looking to break all of those rules and you can come through, sure. And, and get rid of all those old traditions and become the forerunners, the prophets of modernism. I just posted something in the chat about that. Thank you, Stephanie. I see you. You're welcome. Researchers, you're so helpful. Thank you. So we are going to now share. I do have it open. Share screen. Isn't it wonderful? One of the greatest things about growing older is that you learn new things. Yes. It is the most exciting thing, correct, Eileen? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so Monsieur Bonad painted landscapes, urban scenes, portraits, intimate domestic scenes in which the backgrounds, colors, and painting style usually took precedence over the subject. So get ready for this. The style was more important than the subject matter. All right. Before we even look at it, Eileen likes it. That makes me happy. This is a self-portrait by Bonat. You can see that it's kind of realistic, but not really. Are we looking at the picture? Okay, good. Just making sure. So he showed a talent for drawing and watercolors as well as caricature at an early age. He painted frequently in the gardens of his parents' country home. They were well-to-do. He also showed a big interest in literature. He received his baccalaureate in the classics. And here's something we've heard about in the background of many artists. To satisfy his father, he studied the law. We hear that a lot about particularly French artists. He um, earned his license in law in 1886 and 87 and began practicing as a lawyer in 88. While he was studying law, however, he attended art classes at the Académie Julienne in Paris, and there he met several artists, including Maurice Denis, who was an Impressionist painter. And Denis made quite an impression on him, not to make a pun, an Impressionist painter who made an impression on Bonnard. And in 1888, Bonnard was accepted by the École des Beaux-Arts, where he met another Impressionist painter, Edouard Rouillard. He was, and he sold his first commercial work of art, a design for a poster for France, Champagne, which helped him convince his family that he could make a living as an artist. Then, and hence his career was launched. This is a portrait of his eventually wife, Mach. She was his lifelong model. Uh, it was many years before they married. You like the shadows? Yes. You could see how he was a precursor of modern art. His use of color is very unusual. He was not a fauve artist, though. Remember our friends, the fauves, the wild beasts of French art? This reminds me very much of Matisse, but he did not know anything about the fauvish artists and did not identify with them at all. Daniel. Welcome. I love her green dress against the 
reddish pink background. I find that very exciting and vibrant. I also love the, the large size of the table in the foreground, that curved shape up against the rectangles of the walls. It's kind of exciting to me. And then, of course, the cat protruding. Good morning, Yunsi. I didn't see you come in. You were very quiet. You came in on little cat's feet. That's a famous poet. You know it. What? What you said. Little cat's feet. It's a line from a poem. Yes. Carl Sandburg. Carl Sandburg. About fog. About fog. We're so smart today. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Okay, so Bonag lived with Mach. She was his model for many of his paintings. Her birth name was Maria Boissin, but she changed it before she met Bonag. They married in 1925. Um, he met her in 1893. Um, Bonag had love affairs with two other women who served as his models for some of his paintings one of whom committed suicide shortly after Bonard married Math. All right, this I believe is also Math, the rather, shall we say, beautifully round lady in the back. Not sure who the other model is on the left, nor am I sure it matters. Um, Love the colors in this. Now, his work was often very textured and a little bit blurry like this, but remember this is pixelated and digitized. So I'm not sure if it's a very good replication of this painting. I do so love the composition, the fact that the table on the right is running off the corner edge of the image like that is so asymmetrical and exciting. I love the narrow corridor on the left side of the table with the reddish carpet and then the yellow carpet underneath the model on the left. That really leads your eye up the middle of the picture to that large green rectangle in the back. I think that's just a beautiful positioning of the objects. And then the white coat on the model is so exciting. Uh, Laura, Robin Wilson is trying to enter. Thank you. And the golden color of the carpet and the upholstery on the chair is kind of wonderful too. It echoes some of the gold in Marth's beautiful gown on the right. And remember, the whole idea of Les Nappies was about showing their style, not trying to recreate the reality of the objects in the painting. Um, some of the Nabi, as I mentioned before, had highly religious, philosophical, or mystical approaches to their paintings. But Bonnard, interestingly enough, was very cheerful. He was kind of an outlier in that. He was the humorist. Villard wrote, his colleague Villard, the other Impressionist painter, wrote that he was the humorist among us. His nonchalant gaiety and humor expressed in his productions, of which the decorative spirit always preserved a sort of satire. In 1891, he met Toulouse-Lautrec and in December 1891 showed his work at the annual exhibition of the Société des Artistes Indépendants. This painting is so blurry, forgive me, but I believe in reality, it has that blurry effect as well. So it's digitized, but it's also a very textured work of art. 
there is a figure in the bottom left quadrant of the piece. You can just make out the features of, I think it's a young girl. She has a rather elaborate fall of hair here. It's difficult to see. Oh, I see. It's very difficult to see, unfortunately. Um, yes, sorry, there is a figure on the right holding something above its head. I think it's a, a large bowl filled with something. It's, it has a spectral quality to it. It looks kind of spooky in the image on my laptop. The way he's divided the space in this picture is kind of interesting. The very dark blue, almost black, in different areas of the painting is kind of cool. The style of Jap Japanese graphic arts became an important influence on Bonaire. In 1893, a major exposition of works of Utamaro and Hiroshigi was held at the Duran Ruel Gallery and the Japanese influence, particularly the use of multiple points of view and the use of bold geometric patterns in clothing, such as checkered blouses began to appear in his work. Because of his passion for Japanese art, his nickname among the Nabi became Le Nabi Le Très Japonais, which in French means <laughs> Which in French, yeah, yo, I mean, the the most Japanese of all. All right, another one of his landscapes. Very delicate color in this one. I find it very pretty. Um. In 1894, he turned in a new direction and made a series of paintings of scenes in the life of Paris. This is not one, obviously. In 1895, he had his first individual exposition of paintings, posters, and lithographs at the durand Ruel Gallery. Throughout the early 20th century, as new artistic movements emerged, Bonaf kept refining and revising his personal style and exploring new subjects in media, but keeping constant the characteristics of his work. Working in his studio at 65 Rue de Douai in Paris, he presented paintings at the Salon des Indépendants in, I was going to say in French, 1900, uh, in 1900, and also produced 109 lithographs for Parallement, a book of poems by Paul Verlaine. He also took part in an exhibition with the other Nebi. During the years of the First World War, he concentrated on nudes and portraits. Okay, so this is a detail of one of his extraordinarily intensely colored still lifes. Absolutely. Gorgeous color. Now, remember, this is oils. We are going to use acrylics today. You're going to be able to get very deep, rich color, but nothing quite like this. Pretty fab color. Notice that he can achieve three-dimensional quality in his work without, there's no black, right? He uses only color to create shadow. In 1938, we're getting closer to his final years, Bonaf and Liard's work were featured in an exposition at the Art Institute of Chicago. At the outbreak of World War II, in 1939, Bonaire was to depart Paris for the south of France, where he remained until the end of the war under German occupation. He refused to paint an official portrait of French collaborationist leader Marie-Charles Pétain, but accepted a commission to paint a religious painting 
of St. Francis de Salle with the face of his friend Bouillard, who had died two years earlier. Um, in 1947, he finished his last painting, Almond Tree in Blossom, a week before his death in his cottage on La Route de Serra Capou, near Le Canet on the French Riviera. The Museum of Modern Art in New York City organized a posthum posthumous retrospective of Bernard's work in 1948, although originally it was meant to be a celebration of the artist's 80th birthday. Love, love, love the colors in this painting. It does look like Matisse. In fact, I believe, I mean, Matisse must have seen Bonnac's work. What do you think? He must have been influenced. There's so much written about Bonnac. I, I, it's amazing to me that I know so little about him. Bonnard is known for his intense use of color, especially via areas, areas built with small brush marks and close values. His often complex compositions, typically of sunlit interiors and gardens populated with friends and family members, are both narrative and autobiographical. He's fond of depicting these intimate scenes of everyday life. He, oh, this is interesting. He didn't draw from life. So he didn't use Marth, his wife, to sit for him. He frequently took photographs or did sketches and then took notes. And then he would go to his studio and do work from the notes or the photographs. Mm -hmm. So he was atypical in this respect because most artists, including the Impressionists, think about Renoir and Degas, for example, worked from life. So I thought that was kind of cool. He avoided public attention, so he was unique in that respect too. He did not like being in the limelight. He was very quiet and independent. He's been described as the most thoroughly idiosyncratic of all the great 20th century painters. That's pretty amazing. one of his still lifes, just like a riot of color, correct? No, oh, I'm muted, I'm muted. I'm sorry. Um, miss, can you hear me? This is yeah, Robin yeah. at home. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to ask, was he popular when he was painting? Like so many artists weren't known or acknowledged when they were actually yes. doing the painting. Yes. But it sounds from what you're saying. That yes, Robin. Was. Great question. He did okay. he did gain a lot of um notoriety, even though he kept to himself. He was a very popular artist. He designed furniture, clothing, he was a graphic illustrator as well as a fine artist. So he he was well known. And wow, he, he did quite well. He he bought himself a, not, what's the word I'm looking for? Not a mansion, but a, not a chateau, but close to a chateau. Maybe it was a chalet, but he, he did very well in his lifetime. If I think of the word, I'll let you know. But yes, he, he gained quite a bit of fame and fortune. So good question, Robin. Okay. And Roberta Smith, who was, is Roberta Smith still alive? She was a New York Times critic. Here's a quote from her. It's not just the colors that radiate in a bon act, writes Roberta Smith. There's also the heat of mixed emotions rubbed into smoothness, shrouded in chromatic veils, 
and intensified by unexpected spatial conundrums and by elusive, uneasy figures. It's almost like poetry, right? Yeah. So Bonard is somehow up there in the pantheon, and he escaped me in my art history. Um, I hope you all are liking his work. I've heard no comment either way to this morning, which is unusual. Uh, this, I would say, the more intense colored ones, Mr. Robin, the more yes. intense colors I like. Uh, some of the others were just a little bit too fuzzy, fuzzy or whatever it is. But but when you got to the very intense one with the fruit and that dark uh, tablecloth or even the background of this one, then it feels more, how can I say, tangible or just yeah. it, it hits you. Uh, it hits me. So I would say I would go for it. All right, thank you, Robin. So Robin likes the more intensely okay. uh, colored pieces. These ones you find a little bit too fuzzy. Anybody else? This one is definitely fuzzy. Remember, it's a digital copy. I love the green road down the middle. And this is, I believe this is the final slide. What, Eileen? Looks like a plate of eggs. Ketchup on top. Actually, this, this of all of them, for me, is my least favorite. I think that's why I saved it for the last. But this is his wife, Mach, sitting outside in their garden with a very red face. I don't know if she's sunburned or if this copy is not an accurate replica. Yeah, she's embarrassed. <laughs> Maybe she's blushing. Yes, she could be embarrassed. I do, I like all the yellow in the picture. Her face looks like the omelet. <laughs> is that what you said, Esther? <laughs> oh, you're starving? Oh, I lean. All right, sorry, folks at home. We're just we're getting a little silly here. All right. So that is the end of our slideshow about Pierre Bonnard. I am going to do a quick review and demo of color mixing in a moment. Here is our assignment for today. I am going to put up a Bonnard painting. Now, Bonnard basically worked from his imagination, even with the notes that he had available to him. I invite you to either copy the Bonnard or work from your imagination. Think about a country scene that you've loved walking through or a colorful tabletop that you've seen and paint it. I really, 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 really want you to use paint today. I, For those of you who are here, I have brought colored pencils. I have brought markers, but I want you to use paint today. It's a dreary day. Let's bust out and play with paint. Folks at home, Obviously, if you don't have paint, use whatever color, colored drawing equipment you have available to you. So I'm not going to put the Bonard picture up just yet because we're getting the camera ready for me to do the demonstration. Those of you who don't need review and color mixing, however, start working. Those of you at home, you can create your own still life. Those of you here, you I guess you can take stuff out of your bag and create a little mini still life like we have done in the past. All right. So folks okay. here, you can start gathering up your equipment. Folks at home, do you have any questions before we begin? Think color, color, color. As always, I recommend you start with a sketch and pencil first. But if you're feeling really bonardish, Start with paint.
What? J'adore parler en français. Merci pour noticing ça. Je ne sais pas le mot pour noticing. I'm looking at Heather pour qu'est-ce que le mot remarquer remarquer que, que j'aime parler en français. Merci, madame. Mon professeur a dit, m'a dit que mon accent est bon. But that's about all. <laughs> my grammar sucks, but my accent is good. Um, we do not have palettes today. You can either use paper or cups for mixing. I'm going to show that in the demonstration. For those of you at home, you probably won't even notice. I am, while I walk around the room, I'm going to be masked because I'm still struggling with remnants of this cold that I have. I don't want anybody to get sick. How are you, Daniel? Have you been sick? <laughs> no, 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 I haven't. I didn't come last week because I had, but I, I, I had an unexpected last week. I'm saying a present. 
I'm going to make green. Why am I washing and wiping my breath? You don't want to mix the colors to the jar. Want to keep these colors clean for the next person. Why am I starting with yellow first? All right, first. Always start with the lightest color first. It's much easier to darken colors than it is to lighten. Have to use more of the light color to lighten than you need of the dark color to darken. It only takes a teeny bit of the dark color to make it dark. Don't have enough. I keep adding a teeny bit. Until I get the shade of green that I want. I do want the yellow green. So you don't need a lot of blue. If you want a dark green, you've got to keep adding blue to your paint. What's the final secondary color? What does it create? Purple. Purple. Thank you. Red and blue make purple or you're really a stickler for truth and veracity. <laughs> Mileage. Violet? Violet is what color manufacturers call it, not purple. 
to work in a drinking center that was probably called by. Now, this becomes tricky, which to me is first red or blue. I think of red being the lighter in value of the two colors. We could argue about that forever. Values dark or light intensity. With acrylic paint, we are never going to get a true shade of purple. I did bring sun purple paint today. You don't have to. No, you don't have to get it. People will know. It almost looks like black. The purple I brought is so dark. It's almost too much blue. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's a little light purple, but it's got a brownish tinge to it. So it's just a little tinge. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get it what most people think of as purple. You know, because if <laughs> if you want more of the kind of purple that you expect, you have to get it from the jar. It's just the way it is. It's a chemical thing. Now we can get closer to like a lilac and violet thing mix it with white. Notice I'm not putting the white directly with it because I don't use the white clean. I'm going to use a second brush for mixing. What does it need more of? A little bit more blue. Grayish? Why is it gray? Because I mix the white. But it's more of a purple. So I have to experiment. I have to play. I have to put with some colors till I got the shade, the value, the tone of the color that I wanted. That's what painters do all the time. I recommend you keep a second piece of paper by your side to test out your colors before you do it on your actual paint. Now, if you have brown or gray, you can mix any of these colors together to get a grayish tone. You can mix orange with blue. You can mix red with green. You can mix yellow with violet. They'll all make a brownish red. You can also mix equal amounts of red, yellow, and blue together without forming a brownish red. If you mix white with any of these colors, I'll show you what happens. What happens you? If you mix white, any color, what happens? Yeah, it gets lighter. If I mix black with any color, what happens? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if I mix black with some darker? Sure. Oh, it's not. It's not dry. We're mixing. 
charcoal. Distinguishing charcoal. It's a commercial name for something. Somebody is sitting at a desk and deciding, oh, that looks like charcoal. We're going to name it charcoal. Or is dark, is it darker than the normal blue? Probably. That's probably what they said. Oh, that so looks like a piece of charcoal. I'm going to name it charcoal. Is a piece of charcoal dark? Probably darker than the other. All right. I I could go on about this all day long, but I'm not going to. So don't go stress it out. So now I'm going to put it. I have a question. Oh, we have a question. So, blue don't really quite come purple, but would, if Is you it? did it, yeah, if you said red and blue with acrylic doesn't come quite purple. That is correct. But if you used watercolor red and blue or oil red and blue, are they more purple? They work much better than acrylic, yes. And depending, like if you have really high quality acrylic, like golden paint, you can get a truer purple, yeah. Mm. And it depends which blue you use and which red you use. If you have ultramarine mm. blue and alizarin crimson red, you can get a gorgeous purple. But the kind of acrylic paint that we have here today, student grade acrylic paint, mm -hmm. you, you cannot get a true purple. I see. Thank and you. I'm and I'm guessing. Do you have golden acrylic paint? Uh, no, I don't really have. I haven't really done any kind of paint like that. Only thing I ever did was watercolor, a little bit. Okay, well, you should get a lovely. Be able to get a lovely purple mixing red and blue together, closer than you can with the kind of paint we have here today. Okay, just wondering. Thanks. You're more than welcome. It was a great question. Um, I'm going to make a public announcement now. Folks here, if you're interested, you might want to listen up, as well as folks at home. I am in a group show in New York City tomorrow night at the Sears Gallery. Um, I believe the opening starts at 6 and goes until 8 p.m. Sears Gallery is at 547 West 27th Street. The gallery is on the second floor. And it is the 40th anniversary of the gallery. We are a feminist gallery. There's a lot of art in this show. If you like seeing a lot of art in one location, it's pretty amazing. And it's open and free to the public. And Laura, am I free to share now? Not a problem. Thank you. I'm gonna, oh, why am I low battery? That's weird. On my laptop, I'm plugged in. Yeah. Is this outlet dead? Let me try it. Isn't that bizarre? The laptop is hot, that's for sure. Your Mac will sleep unless plugged into a power. I do, it's plugged in. So, yeah. yeah. 
Gilbert died. There you go. A little loosey goosey there. Yeah, what is happening with your ball over there? That's strange. Yeah, your battery is low. Yeah. Very low. Mm. There's a plug. Wait a minute, where is that? There's the plug. You know what? Let's see what's happening. That's the. Uh, do you have another port I can plug it in or no? No. Oh, there you go. Now it turned green. Oh, but it's charging. When it's red like that, it means it's charging. Oh, it was just it, it, it was just green. You know, that's what's weird. Uh oh, did we lose you? You just killed me. Well, no, that's green. But you killed, but the laptop just died. All right. Well, we're there. We're still up live on my laptop, so we'll let them know. They haven't. We haven't lost them. Let's just see if that comes back up. Yeah, that's weird. That you either need a new cord or there's something wrong with the outlet there. Yeah. What am I going to do for class this afternoon? Uh, let's. It seems uh, there's either something wrong with my laptop or my cord. So I lost power in my laptop, but we can see you from Laura's laptop. In fact, I look infinitely better from her laptop. So everything's good. If you need me, just yell or put something in the chat, please. I hope you're having fun. Bonard away. I cannot put a picture on the screen, though. That's a problem. But you have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's more of a problem for folks here. We're going to research Pierre Bonaf. Which one do you want them to see? <laughs> Which one, kitty cat or the Magritte? But you're gonna have to connect to the big screen, you know. Well, once they've had time, which picture do you want first? Any it doesn't no, matter. I don't want the cat one. Do you. Mm -hmm. okay, let me save it. Yeah, if you do it in hosting, though, that means it's for the video. So. It may have a copyright in this. Uh, hold on, let's see. JP. Let's, let's. let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. These are off. Oh, yeah, it is. What's that? Yeah, yeah. You want to go it's back. Go back. Go back. Mm -hmm. Put the back there. Um, just keep scrolling and see if you can find it. And this one? It's this that one reproduces blurry. I had that in the slideshow. 
you know, that picture with flowers is very nice. Good table. Open mm -hmm. that up. See how it looks. Oh, it's a full visit. I'm mm -hmm. not going to take you to the what I do is I drag the whole image onto my screen. Mm. I don't go to visit. Mm. Let's see if it does that. You need help. Sorry. Yes, it's very Yeah, it's finished. I love this. I love this color. Don't you make that? It's beautiful. Let's see what we can do here. Well, um, Jake Lawrence is black. Does the face color? Yes, yes. What do you mean by face or skin color? You want your skin color? It's my skin color. Watch me. First of all, we need paper towels. These are really beautiful paintings already. You can start with what you've already mixed, Sally. This is terrific. The next green. If it's a little too red, you need to make it more brownish. And the way to do that is to put some green into it. See how it's kind of brownish now. And then finally, correct. Then you put in lots of white. I don't know. You did. You did. You did. You you add a little bit of green and then lots of white. There you go. You're welcome.
Say it one more time. <laughs> I don't know if you heard me. My folk, folks at home, my laptop died. It ran out of battery. It's charging. Are you good? Robin, you're okay? I think she's trying to get up. She's fine. Yeah, she's waving. What's she doing? Dancing? She must be. She has a. Yeah, she goes. Is she coming? Oh, wait. She muted. You're muted, Robin. Okay. You know, I wanted to say something back about that painting that was so strong. Muted, Robin. Can you hear me? I'm. Yes, now I can. I'm my machine. Can now you can uh, about okay. that one painting. Yeah, yeah. I wanted quite a lot back about that painting that was so strong. You didn't hear me. What's happening? Yes, now I can. I'm my machine. Can now you can uh, I, about okay. that one painting. Yeah, yeah. I wanted quite a lot of that painting that was so strong. I don't, you didn't hear me. What's happening? Yes, now I can. Can you hear me, Liz? Okay. No, no, no. Can you hear? I'm not muted. Can't hear me. Okay. There's a delay in your sound. Can you put your question in the chat? Sure. Sure. Can you I'm not muted. Can't hear me. There's a delay in your sound. Um, can you, can you hear me? question in the chat? This all? Sure. Yes. Okay. I can hear you at the chat. Okay. Okay. This all? Sure. Yes. I can hear you at the chat. Okay. Oh, it's all sure. Yes, I can see that. It's all okay. Right? Yeah. She's muted, right? Yep. There's always a problem with her saying, I don't know why. Also, your laptop's charging. Mine is too. Yep. There's always a problem with this one. Also, your laptop's charging. Mine is too. Yep. She popped in twice. I don't know. It sounds strange. Oh, here's the message. I don't know the answer. Oh, here's the message. Thank you, Maybe Okay. Why don't you wait till I text you, Heather? Wait till I text. Okay. Why don't you wait till I text you, Heather? Wait till I text. <laughs> okay. Like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> Why don't you wait till I text you? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, folks. I am back in. So, Robin, maybe try talking to me now. I am back on Zoom. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. It, it was about the painting that I had liked so much. There was dark colors and fruit yes. and all. My question about it was, it seemed so different than most of the other paintings he was doing, yes. which didn't ha had soft edges and not as in-depth color. And I wondered, and this is probably something to look up, for me to look up, but uh, what was going on in his life or who was influencing him at that time that he seemed to be uh, willing or able or wanted to, to do this other kind of painting. This is a wonderful point. Does that make any wonderful sense? Wonderful question, but I want to remind you that that was a detail of a larger work. So. Oh, it could be that if you saw the whole piece, it might have appeared more similar to his other works. I see. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll try to find that on on my my internet and and look at it. Okay. Thank you. Liz. And if you if you don't, let me know, and we'll try and find out together. Okay. All right, because I would love to know the answer to your question. I keep going in and out of mute. Me too. So thanks, Liz. Thank you. You're welcome. You've been asking some really helpful questions today. Thank you. What time is it? Oh, we still have time. And sorry, everyone. I I don't know why my computer um, completely lost battery power. It was plugged in, I thought, but um, the battery died. The good news is I am back. Folks at home, you're working okay? You're enjoying our color experimentation? I hope. Lizzie, how are you doing with your watercolors? Uh. You always don't like what you're creating, and when you share, it's always so beautiful. Remember, we're experimenting today. Try and keep that in mind. Liz, I didn't mean to go off the grid, but I found this painting on my phone of that he had painted, and and I'm copying that painting. Oh, good. And I'm drawing it, and then I'm going to do color. I because I don't know. That's just what I'm doing. So I'm not. I have all the colors out to use, but I'm not using them yet because I'm drawing and trying to get the perspective which is not so easy. And the okay. Color, of course. And is that a Bonard? Yes. The color is much more intense, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and the edges are more, it, 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 well, I may have the, this is Pierre Bonard, right? Yes. This is our. our you, you may have hit yeah, on okay. very painting. So, is there fruit in it? No, it's a picture uh, looking out a window, oh, oh, looking oh. out a window, and then the the window. And as as I'm painting it, I'm finding there's a child in a chair, there's a cat, there's all these other things that you don't even see when you start to look at the painting. So I was just interested in this to to try to copy it that keep and going. and see what I could do. So. I'll get it back to you when I get the color in. Thanks.
You did not go off the grid. You're doing great. I'm the one who went off the grid. I lost battery power. You know what, Laura? The possible pause here is uh, I see that my cord was very tangled. Okay, you can just grab it uh, back here. This is more flowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going to charge it while you're at lunch. You can do oh, I'm going to take a moment. Mm -hmm. Wow, you guys are amazing for this. Look at the gorgeous colors. Isn't it fun, Nixie? And learning as you go. <laughs> Don't forget your bathroom. Very important. Good. Then I'm going to ask that you wash and dry this very well because this is a cover for something I have to bring home. Okay. Thank you. Amazing. Gorgeous. The painting is gorgeous. This was a very inventive palette, I have to say. Oh, that's a going hard painting. Yes, I like that one. Yeah, that's good. Beautiful color. All of this green, this is good. Shades, but with the shades of red, this is the green and the red, complementary colors, and the red and green colors. You are creating art The steak is more cheaper than pasta in Argentina. Do you know that? The same price. The same price. Oh, I'm so proud of everything. 
everybody today. Really proud. How old are you? Really beautiful. Do we want to share today? Hands up if you want to share or you want to keep painting. One hand up. Three hands up. Okay. Those of you who want to share, we'll share. Those of you who want to keep working, you can keep working. Sally, why did you switch to colored pencil? Grab it wrong. It was a what? Thank you for letting me know. I was still back at 1135. All right, uh, folks at home, you get to share first today. Robin, I just heard you're about to leave. Would you like to share first? Have you? Okay. Oh, wait up. Okay, so this is the painting. Yeah. I can get it to you without. Okay. Yeah, the puff. And I'm just. 
I'm just starting to try <laughs> to get the perspectives and, and it's going to take a while. I can't get, it's hardly anything yet. Wait, where are I, how do I go? I can see the drawing and I love it. Well, thank you. I love it. I don't I think the proportions are right. And I want to, I want to use some negative spaces to help me get that. But I'm going to work on that and then I'm going to paint. So Excellent. this is just a sketch. Okay. It's a very Thank you. nice beginning. I, I like how you arrange the shapes on the page. So keep going. Oh, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Great beginning. And I'm looking, I'd love to see everybody else's stuff. So I've got a few more minutes. Let's see who okay. wants to go next. Uh, Lizzie, would you like to show us what you've accomplished today? Oh, Lizzie is gone. Okay, Courtney is next in my queue. Courtney, would you like to share? Oh, sure. It's it's a very early beginning um, with pastel oh, pencils. Hey, okay. look at that. Um, working left to right. Uh, oh, yeah, and you were looking at a Bonnard painting, I think. I next was not. I grabbed... I don't know why I wanted to do something with a red barn. So I went looking and when I found something that was really dynamic in color, I stopped there and grabbed that and started drawing. I love the shape of the tree. It really is reminiscent of one of the Bonard landscapes we were looking at. Gorgeous dark. Yeah, I was trying to go for that sort of pseudo impressionist kind of thing. Hard, hard to achieve with colored pencil, but you're you're really achieving that. I'm Thank using you. pastel pencils. Um, oh, okay. Makes it a little bit easier, but still it hard. <laughs> look. Yeah, it has a softer look. Well done. Thank you. Thank you both, Robin and Courtney. Margo, what have you been up to, Margo? Margo, is, how are so, you feeling today? Any better? doing anything i'm just here to see what everyone else is sharing <laughs> i'm still sick <laughs> it, it lingers <laughs> forever i'm sorry to say so rest 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 all right yeah and you know drink plenty of fluids you know the thing you know the game plan feel better i know the drill <laughs> all right well we're delighted you're with us Stephanie, let's see. What have you made today, please? Um, I, I've been working on this since last night. So, uh -huh. wow. Yeah. Look, talk about perspective. Ooh, she looks gorgeous. Now, Eileen, look at the value, the yeah. dark and light value in her image. Very nice. Gorgeous. Yeah. Looks like an etching. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice, Steph. Thanks. Great presentation again, Liz. Thanks. You did, even though I know nothing about Bonaire. We had fun today, I think. <laughs> being, being silly about Les Nabi. All right, who's gonna share first today? Yancy, do you want to share? Yours is so colorful. Come on up. You have to. Good. Look at the gorgeous color. Right. You, I think this is one of your first times you've actually mixed color. Yes. Yeah. I want you to so this part is a face. Yes. I want it's you a to profile. Yeah. I want you to express the key elements that we incorporate in our life to make our happy, to make us happy. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. So I, I mean specifically for girls, we need high heels, we need um, handy tools and 
drink a lot of water and also flowers and the pets and also I always apply green to represent nature. Nice. Very nice. Well done. Symbolic. It's very symbolic. Thank you. It's cheering yeah. me up. I don't know about you folks, but it's very cheerful. <clears throat> Beautiful color work. Thank you. Thank you, Yim. Oh, everybody else on this side left, so Eileen, you're next. Come on up. And Eileen, I'm this is a salad. So proud of everyone today. This is this photograph of a salad. Talk about it when we can see it. All right. Uh -huh. And my niece made this salad. Oh. This is Eileen's painting of her niece's salad. And I have never seen Eileen finish a work of art. It's gorgeous color mixing. I love the black around the edge. Black olives. Those are the olives. <laughs> love the red with the green. What we call complementary colors. And tomatoes and olives. And carrots. Well done. Eileen took a lot of <laughs> risks today. Yep. Went out, right? Bravo. Here comes Jane. Okay, Jane is back. <laughs> Look at this, it's gorgeous. I'm thrilled with what wow. everyone has painted today. That's like um, that's that's nice. like, that's like the, the artist, yeah. Just like Pierre Bonnard. Great colors. Thank you. Bravo, Jane. And Thank Jane's you. been away, away for so long, she just kind of jumped right back in. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, you want to show your work? Alice, I'm kind of going around. I got my yellow, but my yellow is not good. <laughs> Your yellow is gorgeous. It's a golden yellow. So this is a detail of one of the Bonaf paintings we looked at. It's really beautiful. And great color mixing. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. I wish we had space to store all our work. Um, Lutheran left and her painting's fabulous. Sally, are you going to share yours? <laughs> Sally learned how to mix her own skin color. Do you remember what the colors were, Sally, that you mixed? What did, what did you start with? Start a uh, uh, person's face. Just a little bit of yellow first. Red, blue, and white a lot. Oh, that's a piece. What you need? Then this uh, orange is yellow and red. Orange. This uh, oh, yellow right. and uh, blue, that's green. Hmm. Purple, that's blue and red, that's a mix. That's your class. So and Sally is really learning how to mix colors well. So her skin tone, we started with pink. We mix pink with a little bit of green and then a lot of white. Yes. Green and white. Pink, mm -hmm. tiny bit of green, and a lot of white yes. to get your skin color. Mm -hmm. Beautifully done, Sally. Mixed like media. Like the colorful. So Alice, come on up. Alice did this fantastic scene from the Hoboken waterfront. She worked from a photograph that she took, also beautiful. Awesome. I feel like I'm right there. It looks like an oil, it's so thick. And the details are fabulous. Mutran, you want to show yours? Oh, it's so. Mutran did this painting. It looks just like a Matisse. Um, Nicola, do you want to show yours? 
I can't force anyone to share, but. And Nicola, she is working from a photograph of a tabletop. It's coming along beautifully. The composition is very interesting. I really like when shapes run off the edge of the page. It really forces you to wonder and look and think about the image. Why did the artist do that? Really nice color coming out too. You're starting slow, building up your layers. Every artist is different in their technique. I wish I could be a slow, careful artist. I'm not like that. Daniel, our next and final person to share. I should have kept my mask on. Sorry, folks. And Daniel, look at this bonaft. Still life of the flower. Another incredible yeah. of color. Awesome. Fabulous. Yay. All right. I'm thrilled that everybody's work today. Bravo. Bravo. And I'm going to repeat, I am in a group show celebrating women artists, the 40th anniversary of Sarah's Gallery. The opening is tomorrow night at Sierra's 547 West 27th Street. The opening is from 6 to 8 p.m. I hope I'm going to be there if I'm fully recovered. Um, and the show runs for the entire month, and it is open and free to the public. All right. It is 1 minute to 12 noon. I hope everyone had a great time today, and I hope you like being introduced to, I think many of you never heard of Pierre Bonaf before. And enjoy everyone, Art On, and I will see you next week, the 13th.